separate us from something. Amen. Ain't nobody like separation. Amen. Amen. So what did Jesus say to us? If you're on the housetop, glory to God, and I come to show you something, don't climb back down in there and, <coughs> and try to pack up a bunch of stuff. Just let me have you. Just let me take you. I'm taking you somewhere new. Honey, if I'm going somewhere new, I want some new clothes to wear. If I'm going somewhere new, I want to be shined up a little bit. If I'm going somewhere new, I want to eat somewhere new. I don't want to drag along. Come on now. An old sack full of what I've been dealing with. I'm in a new world this morning. There's a new heaven and a new earth because the old heaven and the old earth has passed away. And I want you to know today there will be no enjoyment to the full until the Lord can just take your little bag and shake it good and empty all that old broke down war out. Hello. In the first place, that, 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 that God didn't say take Lot with him. Abraham took Lot with him. What happened? They couldn't get along. And they had to part. And after the Lord took Lot away from him, he said he came to Abraham in the plains and woke him up one night and said, come out here. I've taught you how to look at the sand. Well, glory to God. Now I want you to do something else. I want you to lift up your eyes and I want you to behold the stars of the heavens. Somebody say amen. He said, I've showed you you're going to have natural seed. Now let me show you the spiritual seed that's going to come forth. That which is first is natural. That which comes afterward is spiritual. The sand of the sea was a natural seed that God would raise up unto Abraham. 
But how many of you know all the way in the New Testament in the book of Romans we're told that Abraham is our father. Glory to God. What did he mean by that? He meant that through Abraham God showed us how to birth a faith on the inside of you that could expound and expand beyond the borders of where you came from. And I would have you to know by the Holy Ghost this morning that it's time for you to get beyond the borders from where you came from. Hallelujah. You ain't no good to nobody if you just in your little old box and can't see past the nose on your face. You've got to lift your eyes up this morning and get a revelation that there's more to this thing than meets the eye. God is doing something like He ain't never done before and you have counted sand long enough. It's time to start counting the stars. Somebody said, well, I don't understand. Well, it sure don't mean get out there with a telescope and try that's all beautiful and love and wonderful, but that ain't what God's talking about. He's talking about what he told Job when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Can you say praise the Lord? Don't you come down off the housetop and try to retrieve what God's trying to take you from. Don't you go back in to something that ain't never caused you none but a bunch of mess and then God's delivered you out of Come on, church. How many of you have ever put yourself right back in a place after the Lord was so gracious to you and, and, and you just could not stand to leave your bag of stuff in the house? Don't the Bible say, he that is on the housetop, let him not come back down to get his stuff. I know that ain't what the church says that verse is. I know what they say that verse is. But I can tell you now, God ain't talking about that. He's talking about people whom he's bringing into something new and something brighter and something better. And we're so afraid that old teapot and it's got a crack in it. Come on now. We're so afraid that old sweater and it's got a hole in it. And we're so afraid. Come on somebody, that old vase and it's got a chip in it. And we're trying to run down there with our bags and pack them real good. Honey, listen to me. The Lord's got treasures for you. You and I will shut hell up Hallelujah. Hey, the Lord has got treasures for you, His people, that you've never laid your eyes on. He's got houses you didn't build. He's got vineyards you didn't plant. He's got land that you didn't even burn. Come on now. The blessings, favor that has your name on it just because uh, you're His child. Just because he set his eyes on you. Just because he daily load, wants to load you with what? Benefits. Yes. And the benefit and the blessing of following the Lord is he always makes a way. Yes. Even where there seemed it to be no way, he makes a way. Can you say praise the Lord? All glory to God. And God said, Abraham, Lot ain't here now. You're going to look differently tonight. I'm not even going to bring you out in the day. I'm bringing you out in the night. Come on, somebody. Why? Because he said, what you going to count, you can't see it in the day. you got to see it in the night. What do you want me to count, Lord? Count them stars of the heaven. See if you can number them. Come on, somebody. But yet the Lord said, every star, or better said, every son of God is numbered. Hallelujah, the Lord has it in his hand. Won't you give him some glory and some praise in this house this morning? Boy, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel God moving in this house. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Father. We honor you. Praise your wonderful name. Oh, you're so beautiful. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Senior Dottie Rambo moved to Nashville, Tennessee and had bought a house and the movers were preparing her things to move and she had had somehow or another God let her have so many encounters with uh, angels, angelic help. And on one occasion, uh, not too long before this moment had happened, she was 
uh, instantly attacked on the road with a harsh diabetes just to, like it took her whole body over. And she was standing on the stage night after night after night after night. And her legs and feet got so infected they just looked like they brought off of her, you know. And so she was having to come off the road instead of being able to sleep and travel on the bus, they'd have to get motel rooms so they can lay her up and medicate her legs and feet and soak them and dress them and so forth. And uh, so finally they had gotten home from that and uh, she, her eyesight was instantly affected. She just went to a bar, couldn't see her hand hardly in front of her, they were so blurry. And so she was in the house where they were living at the time. And she had been asleep for a while and she woke up in the middle of the night. And when she woke up, she said she thought Buck had left all the lights on uh, outside. They were just, she said it looked like a ball field outside. Mm -hmm. And she jumped up out of the bed and she said, Buck, why did you leave all those lights on? She ran over to the window and pushed the windows open and the whole yard and the whole side of the house was nothing but a host of angels that were standing outside. There was the glory that had lit up the yard. And she thought that it was her time and the Lord was taking her. And so she just raised her hands and yielded. She said it was so beautiful and she didn't have any fear. And she said, oh Jesus, you have sent this band of angels uh, to escort me to the throne. And she said, uh, with that said, instead of her dying, she was instantly healed from the top of her head. They were healing angels. They came there to minister healing to her. Every sore was gone. All the decay left. Her eyesight returned. God just totally <laughs> healed her. And then, I don't know why, the Lord has prompted me three times to tell this story, these, these three things to you today. And then the second time it happened, they were on the road, and this time she said she had been hit so hard with discouragement. Just pure, she said, I knew it was the enemy because I didn't have anything to be discouraged about, you know. She said, we were, we were singing more than we'd ever sung. I was writing some of the best songs I could see. It was just an attack on her mind to try to get her to give up. And so they were sitting on the platform getting ready to sing and she said she just said it, just breathed real deep and they were announcing, you know, all about the Rambos and she said, God, the Rambos are nothing. And she said, and I don't feel like anything tonight. She said, I wish I could leave this stage and just not even be on there. And all of a sudden, this little blonde-headed girl walked across the platform crawled up on her lap, wow. kissed her on the side of the face, Woo. was in this beautiful dress and looked like, you know, little girls used to, we always dress our little girl up freely, but it didn't take her long to pull them uh, bows and all off, amen. But that's the way, you know, you try to do them, you try to get them all freely and lacy and all. And so she said, she, uh, that, uh, Dottie said, well, honey, I'm going to have to go sing. She said, where is your mo mother at? And she said, my mother didn't tell me to come. Jesus told me to come up here and to tell you that he loves you if nobody else loves you and that he knows what you're going through. And so she said, I was just sitting there crying, said, oh, black makeup, you know, write it down. And here we had to sing and I was trying to blot it. And she said, she leaned over there and told uh uh, Reba, her daughter, she said, oh my goodness, was that the most beautiful girl you ever seen in your life? And Reba said, mother, hush, there was no girl. And she said, that little girl that was just sitting in my lap. And Reba said, mother, you have got to get it together. We've got to get up and say, the Lord sent that angel. Yes, amen. And so the third occasion I wanted to tell you was what I started to tell you when they purchased the house and they had a, a, a guy driving a moving truck that had loaded all of their stuff up and was bringing it over to, to move them there. And so when the, the truck got there, 
uh, Dolly and, and them were were coming in the next day to set up everything and, and get moved in the house. But there was one room in the house, and when Dolly went in, she was touring the house to get. They were getting ready to buy, it, and she said, "Buck, I don't ask for anything in this house, but that room right there." She said, "Every time I go by that door, I feel the presence of God." She said, "I want that." For my song room. I want to write my music in there. And of course Buck said, well, whatever room you want. And so she uh, had picked that room and that was where she was going to write all of her music. And so the man who had dr driven the moving truck came in the night before to make sure the house was clean and ready for them to get their stuff and boxes and crates and what so on. And all of a sudden when he went to go out the front door, he heard somebody upstairs in the room and he said who in the world is in the Rambo's house and so he ran up the stairs and he opened that door and because he seen light coming out from under the door and when he opened the door it was filled with angels and this is what they were saying she'll be here tomorrow we can't wait for her to come and those angels were carrying music lines and stanzas and and tunes and words, amen, waiting on her to get there so they could speak and she could hear the message and write the music. Now tell me that God does not have a design that is so wonderful. And so I'm telling you, and you have been blessed and we have been blessed thousands of times by those many of those songs that have been sung to us we still sing great deals of her songs and we wonder why something can last so many years and still have the touch of God on it because it didn't come from the earth it came from the heavens amen and I want you to know today that God is wanting to sing a song over you and there is a melody that will set your life in order Order. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What did the Lord tell you? They said, Deborah, get up yeah. and utter a song. Yeah. Can you say praise yeah. the Lord? Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. I think I might have to preach on that <laughs> this morning. Deborah, arise. All of us, son of a higher, you who are down and facing these giants, uh, don't just sit there and pine away. Arise, uh, my beloved, and come away with me. Let God utter a song over you. See, we think of a song, just a few words and a little tune. And it's hard to compete with that mindset in this hour because much of what is deemed as worship is just the whatever they could get for a hot tune and a hot line and the hottest number on the charts. But that is not what will produce the deliverance you need. David said, he compasses me about in the night. Oh, hallelujah, with songs of deliverance. Amen. He compasses me about with songs of deliverance. Amen. I think we'll get into some more of that in just a minute. But if you'd be so kind as to get an offering ready to bring to the Lord, I believe God would have me to preach to you today about how that Deborah awakens and utters a song of deliverance. Can you say praise the Lord? Be blessed as you pray. If you need to give with your card, see my wife and she'll help you.
I have felt it all day long. Praise God forever. And I thank God for it. Amen, amen, amen. You got me. You don't have any. There, all right. That's okay. I'll just switch to the handheld. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Judges because, and you'll have to give me about two seconds here to see where I want to read. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The fourth chapter of the book of Judges. Praise God forever. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, and Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor. And the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron. And for twenty years he mightily oppressed, glory to God, the children of Israel. But the Bible remedies it. Look at verse 4. Deborah a prophetess. Oh, some of these people say the women can't prophesy. And the women can't preach. Oh, you don't have Bible for that. The Bible tells you the women prophesied and the women preached. Hello, you women ought to for sure say amen to that one. Praise the Lord. Let me get just a little more volume with you. And uh, so she said, oh, but a, 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 a woman can't have authority over. Let me tell you something. In the spirit, there is no gender. There is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free, but all are one in Christ Jesus. Deborah was a prophetess. Oh, yes, she was the wife of Lapidoth. She judged Israel. She judged the whole nation of Israel as a prophet of God. Hello. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah. Between Ramah and Bethel. Ramah means to hear from God. Bethel means the house of God. Glory to God. Are you dwelling in a place where you've got the house of God on one side and the voice of God on the other side? Is both of your ears tuned in today to hear what the Spirit will say? And so she said, uh, the Bible said, as she sent and called Barak. Oh, this is so good, folks. The son of Abinoam out of Kadesh Naphtali. And said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Glory to God, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men, my God, and I'll draw thee to the river Kishon, Oh, Sisera, you don't have to do the fighting and the sweating and the bleeding and the cutting. All you've got to do is get in the right place with God and God will, by the anointing, make things fall into place. For fight not the very thing that I am doing in this day, says the Spirit of the Lord. Is it a work that thou hast never seen before? Is it in a way that I have never moved before? Oh, stand not against it. But yea, set thy faith in agreement with my word. And watch me as I perform a mighty work and a mighty wonder even before thy very eyes, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Barak, you go. And when you go, I'm going to draw him right to where you are. You're not going to have to hunt him. You're not going to have to 
to chase him. Come on, somebody. Woo, and he said, I'll draw him, and that ain't all. He said, I'll deliver him into your hand. Come on now. And Barak was very wise. He was very smart. Uh, he didn't take on the big head and say, bless God, this is a chance for me to make a name. No way. He said, I'll go, but I won't go unless you go with me. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I'm not going without the anointing. I'm not going without a prophecy. I'm not going without confirmation. I'm not going unless God moves on me. I'm not going without, hallelujah, the song of the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm going, but I'm going full. I'm going anointed. Amen. I'm going with a prophetic entrance in my mouth because that which will not yield will have to yield when you speak the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you need to hear what the Lord told Ezekiel. Prophesy to it. Prophesy over it. Prophesy. I prophesied over a lot of people all these years of the ministry, but some of the greatest prophecies I've ever prophesied, I did it in the mirror, looking at myself, and said, let me tell you something, old boy. It ain't going to stay the way it is right now. Oh, glory. I used to look in that mirror in the middle of all hell, broke loose, and look at that, and I'd say, see that man right there? He's coming out. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, indeed, folks. you got to prophesy. Everybody say prophesy. Brother Barak said, I'm not going unless you go with me. If you won't go, I won't go. What did the Lord tell? What did Moses tell the Lord in Exodus? He said, if your presence go not with me, I will not go. And the Lord said, my presence shall go with me. And I shall give thee rest. And Moses said, well, I'll still want some. I want you to reveal your glory. I want you to show me. Come on, somebody. Your glory. How many believe that you can go on into the deeper thing of God and not just have a knowing in your head and not just have words out of a book, but you can have a word on the inside of your spirit, man. Amen. Oh, glory. And so she said, oh, I'll go. But she said, you're going to have to know something else. God is going to deliver Sisera into the hand of a woman. Somebody say amen. How many of you believe that the church, well, glory, the woman, the bride, has got to get anointed in this hour and defeat Sisera and all of his 900 chariots of iron. Oh, praise the Lord, somebody. I've delivered into the hand of a woman. Oh, yes. And Barak didn't halt at that, did he? No. The Bible said he went and got his 10,000 men. Well, glory to God. They were of the tribe, Naphtali. Oh, glory to God. Naphtali is a hind let loose. Oh, glory. Who's what? Troops leap over the wall. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you're getting that leaping anointing. You're getting that overcoming spirit. You're getting that spirit that's going to cause you to spring off on the right foot. And you're not going to flop. And you're not going to fail. You're going to succeed. You're going over. Hallelujah. Naphtali was one of the sons of Jacob. When he prophesied over him, leaning on his staff, he said he's a high let loose and he's going to, why? He's going to leap. He's a troop. He's going to leap. He's a high let loose. He's not to be reckoned with. He's got power and stamina. And I'm telling you, God is raising up even more than 10,000 men in this hour. But did the word not say that a thousand had fallen thy side and 10,000 at my right hand and it would not come nigh thee? These are battles that's never been fought before. They're not fought with the power of evil and hurt and hatred. They're fought with the anointing and with the ordination of you to overcome. Yes. They're fought in a different way. 
Some of you had better go back and read your basic scriptures. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Oh, glory to God. You need to go back and read him here to hear him say, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Go back to Isaiah and you'll hear him say, turn the battle back to the gate. What you ever let it in for, you let it in and then it roars day and night. But you've got to turn the battle back to the gate. You've got to send that war out of your flesh, out of your spirit, out of your mind, out of your thinking. You can't lay there another night, folks, and war all night against this thing. God is the victor. He's already come. Amen. He's already claimed the victory over you. Don't you let those 900 chariots roam through your head all night long. Read your Bible study. You know what Sisera speaks of? An enemy mindset. Falsehood images in your mind that are against the will of God. Sisera. Oh, 900 chariots. They had just, oh, glory to God. What was that judge before Deborah Jephthah, I believe it was. They had just encountered a horrible uh, 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 enemy by the name of Ehud. Ehud was mean. He smote them. He tormented them. Oh, glory to God. And Japheth. God anointed him, and he was left-handed. Come on now. Yeah. And at that time, that meant he wasn't no good because he was left-handed. He was cursed. They believe him. They believe that 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 time you left hand up and make you learn your right hand because they thought of the right hand as the hand of what war. Yeah. But how many of you know God raised a man up who was anointed on both the left and the right hand? And that's what David's mighty men of valor. In order to be a man of valor, you had to be skilled in the right hand and skilled in the left hand. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. How many believe both your hands are skilled to do the right kind of warfare? Huh? Sometimes the right kind of warfare is to use this as a weapon and this as a weapon and praise him until you see your enemies run the other way. Oh, I feel the anointing today. Hallelujah. And so what did the Bible say? And this is all hot off the wire, unplanned, unstudied recently. This is just the Spirit speaking. And the Bible said the Lord told him you go into Ehud and, and you tell him you got a message for him. Glory to God. I'm trying to show you that it don't take a mighty army and it don't take thousands and it don't take fine pedigree and it don't take a fine education. Those things are good, good great if you have them, but you might know you got them and if you know you got them, God can't use you. You'll be so high mighty that you won't stay humble. Amen. But how many of you know when Ehud went in, he just said, I got a message for you. Come on. And he said, I want to whisper it in your ear. And he got up there to whisper it in his ear. And the Bible said he took that left hand and he took a dagger. And he put it in his belly. And when he put it in his belly, dirt came out of Ehud. Oh, come on now. The word will make the flesh. You're getting the word in you this morning, folks. And that flesh has got to get out of the way. And you know what the Bible said? The Bible said Ehud was going to pull his hand back. But instead of being there, not Ehud, but the, the, the judge, was uh, uh, Jephthah was going to pull his uh, hand back. But instead of pulling his uh, hand back, his belly swallowed up his hand. And it wouldn't let it come out. Oh, yes. And what did he do? Oh, Ehud's dead now. And you read that it, that when we started reading, what's the first thing we read? Ehud was dead. Is that what he said? 
Ehud was dead. Come on. Ehud was dead. I've got that king's name wrong. It's Eglon was the king. Ehud was the judge. I was saying it right. I corrected myself and I was right. Ehud was the judge. Eglon was the king. And Eglon was dead. Now Ehud's passed. They're all standing around there and another enemy has oppressed them for 20 years. But my God, there was a woman. Everybody say a woman. And when you got listen. When she was under that palm tree, they had come up to her. And when they'd come up to her, the Spirit of God would move on her. And she would prophesy. And she would sing by the Spirit of God. The glory to God. Hallelujah. And he heard, she's the next judge. Jabin's ruling. Amen. Sisera's got 900 chariots of iron. But now Barak has got 10,000. Glory to God. 10,000 men of Naphtali. Glory to God. A glorious people who can leap over the wall, who has power from God, and that's enough to go out and try to meet them. But Barak said, uh-uh, I won't go out, not unless you get up from under that palm tree and go with me. Hallelujah. I believe this is the hour when the prophetic word of the Lord is getting up and going forth. And the Bible says that uh, I wanted to read some I read there, but I wanted to read to you about her song. If you flip your page over to the fifth chapter, I want to read that before I get caught up preaching and forget it. Uh, Judges, the fifth chapter and the verse 12 says, Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, and utter a song. Arise, Barak, and leave thy captivity captive. Ooh, glory to God, thou son of a Bedouin. Then he made him that remained have dominion over the nobles of the people, and the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. And out of Ephraim was there a root of him against the, the uh, against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of my car down, uh, governors came down, governors, and out of Zebulon they that handle the pen of the rider. You see what God loses when you began to utter that song. How many know that Psalm 45 said, My tongue has become the pen of a ready rider. Do you understand? When God starts moving, everything gets to go into play. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Now that the song is awake. Now that the prophetic is awake. Now that there's an alertness in the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. We can go forth and do valiantly because we have the anointing to do so. Uh, Wednesday night, how many remember we were preaching to you about uh, the Bible said uh, to uh, to uh, uh, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And then he said, look and tell me what you behold. And he said, I looked and behold an almond tree, an almond branch. And remember, I told you that in the Hebrew tongue, the word almond is the awakening one, which they call the almond tree, the awake tree, because when all the other trees are still sleeping in the winter months, uh, in the end of January, the almond wakes up uh, and begins to bring forth fruit and begin even before the leaves come on the pine, that the bud appears and the fruit appears, amen and it begins to bloom and to blossom and it's called the awake tree and God said to Jeremiah I will hasten my word to perform it and what he really mean was I am awake over my word that is in you hallelujah here we're reading it this morning awake oh Deborah awake Barak one time David said wake up Saltry wake up Harp wake up that that is with in me there is a stirring going on in this hour. God is awakening. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I don't mean to holler, but I feel like hollering. Yeah. There's, I'm trying to wake somebody up. Yes. Wake up, Deborah, utter a song. Wake up 
and arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive. Oh, hallelujah. She said, something happened when we done that. What happened? We took dominion. Oh, even the nobles and the princes. Oh, glory to God. Verse 15 says, talks about the princes of Issachar. Oh, we know about Issachar. He has understanding of the times. And also Barak. And he was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were a great faults of heart. Are you hearing me? Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleeding of the flocks? You better listen to this now. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. In other words, you can't hide in the fold. What other sheep are bleeding and needing? Yeah. That's why the shepherd said he'd leave the whole fold. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yeah. To find what? One that was out of strength. Yeah. Hello? Yes. You cannot hide in the church to keep from fulfilling your ministry. Yeah. Right. You can't hide behind just a religious system. When God is calling you to the forefront and the cutting edge of what the Spirit is saying now. Hallelujah. We preachers better wake up and preach. Yeah. Singers better wake up and sing. Yeah. Prophets better wake up and prophesy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so verse 17, well I can't read all of these scriptures. I'll have to quit right there because we won't get to it all. But I think everybody agrees that the Lord wasn't just telling Deborah to thumb through the hymn book and find her favorite song. Come on now. Yeah. There was a victory of deliverance that yeah. was tied in yeah. to what she was going to utter out of her mouth. Hallelujah. He was telling her that when you do sing, something's going to be released yeah. in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you do sing, something's going to break prophetic movement is going to shift the present climate. And you are going to see evidence and results. Uh, when he says awake, David said, be merciful unto me. My soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of his wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Oh, hallelujah. I like this song. I'll cry to God most high that performeth all things. Oh, praise the Lord for me. David said these things are trying to swallow me up, but the Lord is going to send help from heaven and save me. Oh, glory to God. That's all in the 57th Psalm. 57 verse 4 says, My soul is among uh, uh, is among lions and I lie among them and they're, they're set on fire and even the sons of men whose teeth are like spears and arrows and their tongue is a sharp sword but then he said my heart is fixed my God hallelujah my heart is fixed glory to God he said I will sing and give praise oh glory to God that's that verse I was quoting to you, Psalm 57, 8. Wake up, my glory. Wake up, psaltery and heart. I myself will awake her. Hallelujah. There is a specific role played in this Bible from cover to cover as it concerns music and singing that is not fulfilled by any other part of the ministry. Amen. The, uh, there's 150 psalms in your Bible. 150 of them. All they are is Holy Ghost singing that David done when he was sometimes, oh glory, sometimes he was shouting and running because God had delivered him. Some days he, woke, he never did go to sleep that night because he wept and cried all night because he didn't feel the victory he needed to feel. But he still prophetically put the pen on the paper and said, God will deliver me. God is my refuge. God is a stronghold. God is a high tower. God is a God that delivereth me. Amen. He'd say things like, I'm like in a dog's teeth. They're tearing me to shreds. I'm stuck in a net. But I'm waiting patiently on the Lord for I know he will come and deliver me my God singing 
like that, laying there singing. When the ark wasn't home, and he longed for the presence of God. Oh, praise God. He sang, come bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord, we stand by night in the house of the Lord. The 150th of those songs, he called out every instrument he could name. He said, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Glory to God. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the cymbal. Praise him with a song in the heart. Praise him with a timbrel and a dance. Praise him on string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud sounding cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let, what did he say after that? You know it. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Woo. Ephesians 5 tells me I'm not to be drunk with wine. But I am to be filled with the Spirit. And the marks of a Spirit-filled life is we will sing spiritual songs and make melody in our heart to the Lord. Then again in Colossians 3, God tells us admonish one another with spiritual songs. Come on. We were in Sister Janet's meeting last Thursday. Thursday was a week ago. And the spirit of the song got in there. And she about and Jeff together about sung that whole service. Even the message. Sometimes in the middle of it would turn into a melody and a tune. And we read over in the book of Habakkuk that there's a scripture in there that says the prayer of Habakkuk Shiganoff. Most people read that and don't even know what it means. They probably think your town he come from. But that's not what it means. Shiganoff is when your prayer turns into a song. It's when you get to singing from way down here. How many know there's a song here and there's a song here? There's a big difference. Glory to God. Paul said, I won't just pray with the Spirit. I won't just talk with the Spirit. What did he say? I will sing with the Spirit also. Oh, uh, <laughs> Glory to God. You may not know this, but God's a singer. Yeah. Oh yes, Zechariah or Zephaniah 3 tells us that the Lord will rejoice over you with singing. Hello? And then I already quoted to you that I'll say it one more time. David said even in the night season he compasses us about with songs of deliverance. There's always been an eternal song. God said to Job, where were you when the morning stars sang together? There's a song that was sung before you ever got here over you. There was something God uttered over you before you ever learned to sing on your own. Heaven is sung in accordance with the will of God over your life. Amen to God. And they rejoiced over your coming forth. Amen. And I just believe that in this hour, God will enable us to tune in yes. to the other side yes. and hear what heaven is saying on the matter. I don't believe we're going to have to just take earth's information and, and get through these things. I believe we've opened the door, hallelujah, in the supernatural realm. I believe God has opened the heaven and poured on our behalf and has allowed us to get in with what is going on. Praise the Lord. Isaiah the 6th chapter tells us seraphims began to sing one to another and they sang holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Mm. And when they sang, the effect was so powerful that the, the post by the doors of the temple began to shake and began to tremble. Somebody say amen. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you something about a song. I got to, you just think about what's in a song. There's poetry in a song. There's rhyme in a song. There's stanzas in a song. There's melody in a song. There's harmony in a song. 
and one of our old friends and pastors from down in St. Lucie County, Brother Bunning, who's in the presence of the Lord this morning. He's gone to glory. But he told me one night after a, a, a service that uh, he, on Father's Day one day, he had called a work day for the church the day before. And he showed up and thought that all the people was going to come and help him get to church grounds pretty. And he said only one other man wow. showed up to help him work. And he said, we washed and scrubbed and painted till we were so tired. And he said, when that other brother went home, he said, I laid down on the hill out in front of the church and rested my head back on my hands. And he said, I was so aggravated, I said, I'm not going to study for no sermon tomorrow. He said, I'm going in there and get me a, <coughs> a good sermon to Father's Day that's in a book and they said, I'm going to stick a bookmark in it and that's what they'll get. He said, I've worked till I wore out and none of them helped me. <laughs> Amen. You can only understand that if you've ever been a pastor. And so he went in the office and got his book and uh, he got up and began to preach and his wife, Sister Bunny, took the children in the nursery and she was seeing after the children in the nursery in the back of the building. And all of a sudden, she heard Brother Bunny uh, 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 speaking poetry. Every line rhymed. Everything he said sounded like he was quoting poems. And Sister Bunny said, Oh, dear God, said he's grabbed the poet book instead of the sermon book and said that he's in there preaching out of that book poems. She walked in the church only to find that he didn't have no book at all. The heavenly book had opened on the inside of it. And for an hour, he stood there and prophesied in poetry to his people as the Spirit of God wrote it right out of his mouth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, the, the, you know, there's so much to get in on this. I could probably talk about how that Solomon wrote a thousand and five songs. And he wrote three thousand proverbs. And yet the Bible tells us there was one song that excelled them all. It's called the Song of Songs. Hallelujah. The Song of Solomon was the highest order of them all because it revealed the bride. Glory to God. It unveiled the bride. It talked about the bride. Amen. And I know we pick songs and sing them and we got favorites and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm preaching today is not your favorite song. What I'm preaching today is something heaven sings Amen. on the inside of your spirit. Amen. Amen. Somehow or another, there is a chain reaction that happens when this song is uttered. Glory to God. In Revelation 4, when the living creatures began to sing, oh hallelujah, around the throne, it caused a reaction, a chain reaction. Elders start bowing. Creatures start flying. Crowns start falling. Oh, hallelujah. They all join in. There is something getting ready to be uttered in this earth that is going to make all of creation hear and feel. Hear and feel. Uh, you know, all of this stuff, elders bowing and, 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 and singing, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Then in the fifth chapter, after loosening of the seals, the four living creatures and the 24 elders come forth having what? Golden hearts. Everybody say golden hearts. Oh, now, if you wouldn't know this right offhand, but if you're a reader of the Bible, you know that the harp is what is connected with the prophetic. Because when Samuel released Saul after he poured the vial of oil on his head, he told him, you are going to beat a company of prophets coming down a mountain playing harps. And when you hear those harps, you're going to start prophesying. Is anybody with me? Golden harps. These golden harps were in connection with something else. Golden bowels full of odors, which are the what? Talk to me. They're the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. My God. They're the prayers of the saints. 
saints and they are offered with much incense. Oh, glory to God. Uh, prayer, music, singing, they all eventually turn into one. Hello? Yeah. Revelation 5 and 9 tells us these creatures did what? Sung a new song. Yes. You can't sing no new song mm -hmm. unless you've been redeemed. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we can tell you these four living creatures are more than just created heavenly angels. Yes. Angels don't know how to sing redemption song. They've never known anything but what they are. Yes. They're created beings. Somebody say mm -hmm. amen. Yeah. Oh yes, but these living creatures join in a song and the song they sing is a new song. Somebody say praise the Lord. And the song they sing is you are worthy to loose the seal. You're worthy. Uh, you're the lamb slain. They sung that from the foundation of the world. Not only that, they sang you have redeemed us. Not only that, they say, you have made us priests and kings. Amen. You could just say that music and singing somehow or another connects us with the supernatural. Oh, yes. When Saul was tormented day and night by evil spirits at night so bad he couldn't sleep, he said, where's David? Get him in here. Let him play his harp. Why? Because when he plays his heart, he drives every evil spirit, come on now, out of this room. Are you dealing with things that are trying to torment you? Put the radio on. Put the CDs on. Get Holy Ghost music on. Play it all night long. I won't sleep. Oh, yes, you will. You'll learn to sleep with it. You'll be to the place pretty soon where you can't sleep without it. Somebody say amen. Are you going to pray? Is everything in the world trying to grab your attention from praying? Put the worship on. Put Holy Ghost music on. Fill the atmosphere and the environment with the glory of the Lord. Don't just sit down in the middle of a turmoil and clanging and banging and try to have an intimate conversation with God. Set the atmosphere. Season that room. Glory to God. With words of faith and power. Amen. Amen. It's so strong that Deborah, God said, Deborah, you get up and you utter a song. Sisera's coming with 900 chariots of iron. The idea is you better weld swords. You better get some shields. You better, dig you, you better get a dugout somewhere for protection. And what does God say? Get up, Deborah, utter a song. The whole deliverance of Israel was tied to a woman in her soul. <laughs> what does Isaiah 54 say? See your married woman and break forth in the same glory be to God. There's a song, but if you sing by faith, you break forth into a new song. Ooh, hallelujah. You can't afford to stay down. You can't afford to get despondent. David said, don't you get so quiet in me, oh my soul. Rise up within me, oh hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Ooh, I tell you, I feel this, my Lord. Oh, David, he got to Israel. He changed a whole order. Before David became king, the priesthood wasn't a singing priesthood. It was a solemn, quiet, ceremonial. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Everything uh, hushed and, 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 and I'm trying to keep from saying the word dead, but that's the only word I can think to call it. Amen. I don't mean to say that about the priesthood, but it was very cut and dry. And somebody said, well, how do you know that wasn't the way God wanted it? Because I know God was hunting a man, glory to God, after his own heart, whom he could put in there. And the only thing that God ever did say he would rebuild was the tabernacle of David. And the tabernacle of David wasn't even a tabernacle. David never built a temple. Glory be to God. All he had was a makeshift curtain. And the ark of God was behind that curtain. And instead of men being hid between a veil and it, they saw their king dancing the spirit around that ark. They saw, glory to God, hallelujah. I tell you, 
tell you what, this will be a good time to amen where I don't explode from all this steam. I need help here on this part. Amen. That, that sweet song, is that what the Bible called it? The sweet song is to live for. When David was on his deathbed, that's what God said about him. He's a sweet psalmist of the Israel. God was saying, I love when David lifts his voice and begins to praise me. I love to hear David sing. I love to watch David dance. I love how the worship comes forth. And what did David say? He was a man of God's own heart. What did God say about him? I want to reveal what he had. Not the building, the building was nothing, but he wanted to rebuild that anointing of worship. Oh, glory to God. Oh, sometimes I want to say what Paul and Jesus said. You worship, you know not why. There is a true worship of God in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You feel it when it touches you. It's an inspiration from the all. I would take nothing for what I've heard in worship. I would take nothing for saints dancing in the spirit. I would take nothing for people hollering and getting blessed of God. I would take nothing for tongues going out in the church. I would take nothing because it's the sound of heaven. Oh my God. He separated David. He said, he said, I own three groups. He got a hold of a group and called them. He said, Now these, oh glory to God, should prophesy with hearts, psalters, and symbols. Not should just sing, not should just give out their favorite tune. They shall prophesy with hearts and salt you better know one thing there's more going on than talent there's more going on than just a good voice there's more going on than just pretty harmony there's more going on cause you can get that on any channel of your radio dial but there's another sound beside that it's the sound of heaven it's the sound of Zion it's Deborah uttering her song Ooh, glory to God I'm trying to land this thing. He chose some, a, a man. Hallelujah. And I guess it's just the Holy Ghost. Because I don't even know when or how long ago I studied this. I can't remember. But I throw this open this morning while April was down here teaching. I didn't even know I had a talent of this. But here it was. One of David's chosen men was Heman, who had 14 sons and three daughters, wow. all of which were seers and prophets. <laughs> and this is what David said their job was to do, lift up the horn. Glory to God. 17 children wow. of this one man had an anointing on them to cause the horn to be raised up in the house of David. Somebody say praise the Lord. The song of the Lord is so mixed with prophecy. Do you remember it over there in the book of 2 uh, Kings when, when they had all of us had such a mess and they'd been shut off from the water. There wasn't nothing they could do and they, they couldn't get out and get nothing good. And, and they said, and, and Jehoshaphat said, <laughs> he said, is there not a prophet around here? How many of you ever get, you feel that way when you need direction from God? Yes. Do you call on God to give you insight? Yes. I don't take it like it is. I say, Lord, I know you can show me right. what I need to see on this matter. Yes. Show me in a dream. Show me in a vision. Show me through the man or woman of God. But I refuse to believe that you mean for this to remain a mystery for me. Shine the light on me, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Envelop me. Enlighten me. And the Bible said, Jehoshaphat said, Isn't there a prophet somewhere? 
And they said, I love this line right here. They said, there's Elisha who poured waters on the hands of Elijah. And when Elisha came up, he said, somebody get me a minstrel. That's the same thing today would be said, get me a guitar. That's right. He took that guitar and started playing. And the Bible said when he began to play, oh, praise the Lord, the hand of the Lord came on him and he prophesied. I said he prophesied. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yes. And here, I got to shut it down, but my God, that Deborah, that song, that prophetess, that seer, that Barak, who's a type of Christ, glory to God, leading captivity captive, but he don't do it without bringing forth a woman, a bride. Somebody say amen. Oh my God. She's called a mother in Israel, wasn't she? Amen. Ehud's dead. The people's coming to Deborah. You got to do it. You got to prophesy. You got to sing. You got to utter something that'll break twenty years of bondage off of my Enough's enough. We're tired of being under it. Jabin the king, but oh, oh, that Sisera, that mean captain, rides through here with nine hundred chariots of iron. Every day we're walking in tracks where he's drove. We're tired of it. Our hearts are ready for deliverance. You can't help people till they get ready for a deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. But God knows how to get them to the place that they are ready to call on the name of the Lord and get them delivered. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Amen. Deborah, you've got to sing. You've got to prophesy. We're ready for a deliverance. And you know what happened? They went up. They went up. They went up. But the Lord had a little woman down there in a tent. Oh, glory to God. Her name was Jael, and she run from out her tent. For the Bible said God had led the army and Sisera right into the hand. Hallelujah. Up they right just like the Lord said that he would do. Glory to God. She said, oh, I'll go. But if I go, you must know one thing. I'm going to deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the long story short, when they run him over the hill, she ran right out of the tent door. Said, get in here. I'll hide you. Oh, glory. She covered him with a blanket. She fed him cheese and milk, fattened him up, and made him sleepy with that warm blanket. And he fell asleep. And she took a tent peg. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. Now are you going to let them 900 chariots run all over you another 20 years? Or are you going to find the real way to defeat Sisera? Get that enemy out of your mind. Nail that thing. She nailed it through his temples. She fastened him to the floor. Glory to God. The Bible said she ran out in there and said, come on in here. I've got him. I'll deliver him into your hand. But the closing finale of the whole thing was God flooded. The Bible said God got up, walked out, brought some clouds with him, caused it to rain. Josephus, the historian, said it rained till the whole river overflowed. Turned the whole valley into mud. I don't have to tell you, an iron chariot ain't no good in a muddy field. God stopped them in their track. Stopped them. Muddied up the ground. Rusted up the wheels. Say amen. amen. And he done it by a singing woman. 
by a woman who could prophesy in song, yes. by a Barak who believed the work was finished, yes. who heard the words, lead thy captivity captive. Yes. Where do we close out? We'll close out right there in Ephesians 4. He has led captivity captive. He has gave gifts unto men. I believe it's the hour of the apostle, the hour of the prophet, the hour of the evangelist, the hour of the pastor, the hour of the teacher. I don't believe it's the hour of one or two. I believe the whole hand of God is being released into this earth. I believe there's a cloud the side like of a man's hand that is formed once again over the body. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And I believe with all my heart, Debras are coming up, Barak's are coming up, Deliverers are coming up on Mount Zion. Amen. Oh, yes, we may not have swum too deep, but we swum in the anointing this morning because the Lord, no, He knew what He was going to say. I didn't know we was going that way. Oh, I got a good one. I don't get bad ones. Hello? I wouldn't waste my time on a bad one. Uh, yeah. I got a good one. And we could have shouted happy. Yep. But the Holy Ghost said, Awake, Deborah. Yeah. Yeah. You going to sing and this is going to turn around for you. God is going to bring 20 years of bondage to an end. And somebody say amen. Let's rise up and give God glory for it this morning. 20 years of bondage was ended. Just because a woman said, come in my tent. Oh my God. Have you got the hammer and the nail in your tent this morning? Come on church. Is your tent got enough of the word to defeat the enemy that's lying in your ear? Oh glory to God. Well for God's sake, don't let him up. Fasten him down. Fasten him to the floor. Come on now. Wait till he's totally fastened and then shout because God has given you the victory. Oh, glory to God. Lord, I pray over these people of God today. Anybody that's been under circumstances that have gone on too long already. Lord, one day's too long with you for anything that opposes your work and your word. You give us a prophetic word today. You've prophesied in our hearing. You've told us from day one that you had something to say to us from the first service you opened with prophetic utterance. And here you are preaching to us about the prophetic song and the prophetic prayer and the prayer that gets the job done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, anoint everybody under the sound of my voice right now. Let heaven loose a sound on the inside of our spirits today. A sound of victory. Glory to God. A sound of power. A sound of war that is accomplished. Glory to God. Not a war that is long and drawn out, but a war that has been accomplished. One that has been defeated. One that has been took care of. One that all we need do is shout because it's already a finished hallelujah work of Calvary. Glory to God. Give us deep witness. Give us deep revelation. Oh, work on the fountains of the deep within us this morning. Break up with great sounds of the Spirit. Amen to God. Let us be spiritual people who make a spiritual sound. Yes, Not just repeating what other generations ahead of us have said, but a right now sound of victory. Hallelujah. We thank you. Praise you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen and amen. Have you been blessed today to be in the presence of the Lord? We want to invite you back for 6 o'clock service this evening. Who knows what God will do in that service. Amen. Bless you for being here. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.